So, is that it? Yeah. Okay, we need to call to order. Um, I first agenda item, I, I circulated the minutes from the last meeting. Evan does very concise minutes. Um, this is for this passive, which is us. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay, so move. Easy. Um, I uh, uh, added to the agenda because um, Don actually wrote this morning and said, what's the reporting schedule for Axiom since we didn't, I don't believe, had it in the contract. And so at one o'clock, I called Mark just to say, hey, you know, and here he is. <laughs> the magic of my phone call, right? Yeah, exactly. He didn't even listen to it, but he's here. So, um, so now that you're here, you can report. I can. <laughs> and also tell us on a schedule of how you can report. I think that was Don's point as well. We had suggested we could just a short update, but um, even better if we get in the person. Well, let me answer the question in a little bit of a different way and say that I am well on my way to completing all of the elements of the report. Really? Yes. I do not have numbers for you today, but the we've gone a significant ways down the road on all of the construction analysis. Once that's completed, I will relatively quickly be able to create the five-year pro formers from that for each of your communities. Those two things will then really be the cornerstone of the feasibility of whether or not what, what, what the lift is going to look like from each of your community standpoints. And um, that's gonna be based on two factors. One is how much grant money can we get and, and how much money do we need to borrow to cover the other part, the other parts that aren't covered, the, 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 the amount of construction that's not covered by the, um, by the grant. That is gonna be, uh, around that's going to all point back to the five-year pro forma that says this is the kind of take rate you're going to need in order to cover the debt on what we estimate to be uh the cost of the project so it's sort of a circular argument that all sort of fits together um we're all, we're pretty far down the road i mean i haven't done it yet but uh those things are all i talked to kim emerson in my office doing that work in creating the construction budgets, he has been working hard. So I feel good that we're some ways. Secondly, um, I sent to you, Carla, but maybe you didn't get it, a document yesterday. I missed a few things yesterday. So. That had was sort of a, the basis for maybe a 10 minute, 15 minute conversation today at the meeting around cutting the cord, cable TV, how do you deal with spectrum, that kind of thing. I also brought with me, what I would say is the beginning of the frame of what the report is gonna look like and how it's gonna read. It's first draft, I haven't looked at it very closely, I wrote it. But I haven't looked at it again. Hey, how are you? I haven't looked at it again. So I, I'm going to pass that out. I, 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 my, my printer had some issues, so I have five of them. So, but these will all come to you electronically, so no problem. So you, I have those two things. So essentially, I am. My objective is to be all done. Thanksgiving. There are a couple of other elements that I I have not dealt with yet that I've been toying with that I do think we will include in the report that may take me a little bit beyond that. And that is 
that there is a, as you as some of you may be aware, the state just came out with their new great grant program. The Connect the Ready grant program. Well, they have others, and you're applying for. Right. Yeah. Okay. right, right. So Connect the Ready just came out, um, and within that application, the state uses a a, a vetro driven data analysis tool that does mapping, and in that map for each of your communities, it will show you the number of underserved, unserved, least served per what the state thinks, per what the state says is you available. Agree with that, right? You cannot agree with it. Yes, you cannot agree with it. So that is, the, I'm, you have to do it. think I'm gonna include that analysis in your report because I think it'll be important for you to see what that is and give you some runway to think about how you see that in compare in, in whether how you apply. And secondly, whether or not there's some things in there that you want to challenge or you're concerned about or that we want to check out on the ground. I'll give you an example. There's a place, there's a section of Lubeck that says claims, according to the Metro map, that is covered by at least it basically is served 100 over 100 or more is considered served and there's a section in Lubeck that has green dots which is 100 over 100 or better um, and so our task before we even challenge it is to go out their task as a committee is to go out and talk to some friends and family who are in those areas and say what do you get 100 over 100? Have you, uh, maybe you should call and see if you can get 100 over 100. They sort of figure out whether or not we can push back. So you'll have that data all built in. Um, I have been thinking of, this is taking longer than you want me to take, but I'll just, okay, no, I'm sorry. I've been, all right, I've been thinking about, I think I'm going to give you each individual community projects standalone so that you can understand by each community what it would take if you decided not to move together. If you decide to move together, I think the, the, the costing will still be relevant and not save you that much money on the construction side. One central CL maybe, so you don't have to have three, uh, a couple of other items, but I think generally speaking, the cost will be the cost. So I don't think it's gonna be a bother, but I think that you will, we will have a little section in there that says something about how working together might make sense if you so choose as a broadband utility, three town broadband utility, if you wanted to go that route. And I know some of you really would like to go that route but I wanna give you optionality and be able to, to, to move in the way that you see fit. And I'm not clear on how you're gonna end up going as I sit here today. So I wanted to make sure you had what you needed. Can you add anything on that in terms of, say we set up a utility and what the potential would be for gaining more scale from like any other towns around here or not? Does that make sense? Because then you get more efficiencies. The only thing you're going to gain from getting larger is potentially the ability to attract more than one provider onto the network and you where you can really truly make it an open access network and providers can come on and off as they see fit or as you gatekeep as, as a utility for those providers. To me, you need to get to 10,000 homes passed to be able to do that. To be able to do that. Otherwise, and I think I'm, I've already even made the recommendation in the first sections of what I'm gonna to distribute today. Uh, otherwise, you need to be settled with an ISP before you go to grant route. Yeah. So if I have your stuff by December 1st, let's call it, step, see, I'm already backing off my <laughs> November 26th. Uh, uh, let's go, right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I have your stuff by the 1st of December, it will start to give you some 
a thought process, I think, on a number of different items. Should we work together? Should we go separately? Who should the ISP be? Should we all interview ISP? Should we not? Should we? And I, at, at me at Axiom or me at, as, as your consultant, can, would be happy to participate as you see fit through those processes. If you, if you would like me to do that, I am absolutely happy not to participate. So I don't, not bothered either way. You, it's really up to you as, as a committee how you want to, to use me once I deliver the final program, a uh, final report. Um, What's the current challenge window or process? There's not really one. Yeah. For which one? Yeah. For, for challenging the data. Oh, I see. From the from Vetro, that's, yeah, that's kind of the key for yeah, maximizing what we and get. maybe just share what your experience is why you're skeptical because it's just because we've challenged the data and they've not accepted it. But we say the number of homes in this town is wrong. You're off by three hundred homes, and they say, yeah, but everybody's off by something, <laughs> so everybody's equal. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. equally screwed really up. Wrong. So that's it's fine. a sliding scale. Yeah. That works really well with surgery, too. It does, yeah. <laughs> so that's the challenge you have. It, instead, potentially, the two things that are positive. First off, let's just call you guys all covered by spectrum, whether it's 70% or 100% or 90%. Let's just leave that off the table for a moment. If you are spectrum served um, home, you are considered underserved. You, will, you cannot get a symmetrical service of 100 over 100 at that location. Therefore, you are eligible to go to the state for funding. How you compete at the state in that environment with whoever else is going to apply is the open question. Don't know. But you will have benefit to be both community driven, because you will be able to say that you're community driven and you can be community owned. And those things add points. This is where the state is going. They talk, they're talking a lot about community driven, community owned. So you will be right where they want you to be either as individual communities. And if you were to come in as a region, that would be even more of a bonus. They would like to see regional projects. So those things are positive. Those are all positive in your direction, regardless of you know, people who think they're served because they have spectrum in your communities now. The state says they are not, you're not served or you're underserved. You're not served as well as you should be. So- Which is fairly recent in the last year yeah. in terms of definition. Yeah. So if we, if we apply as a region, do they look at us for funding individually and give us a total or how would that be that? So be one up, then we have to divide it up based on, probably based on what you find. But we don't have to have a regional entity to be considered a region. We don't have to have a bug to do that. I think you're going to have to have something that shows to them that you're a regional a legal entity. At, at, I would think at minimum you need interlocal agreements at minimum, but you know all the way up to a bud, a fully formed bud. Broadband utility district. Yeah, broadband utility district. I think the state is open. Well, the state has no idea. <laughs> how any of this works. Let's just be clear. They think they do. They do not. I know what it's like because I'm on the ground doing this. They claim they're on the ground. They are not. Not the level I'm at on the ground. So if you came at them with whatever solution you felt like was best, you'd start talking to them well before you applied and say, this is what we're coming at. This is what our regional approach is. And I would assume they would be open here. To, to whatever approach makes sense for the communities with whatever rationale you brought to them. Do, do you know who they're lining up for 
technical help. I mean, that's what we're applying for on this get ready for now. And they have a stable of consultants, I guess, that can check, you know, an ISP's number or numbers or whatever. Is I, that clear at all? To it's not happens? clear to me. Um, they are testing a strategy in Lubec where we're where we're where we're working to get an application in this round, where they are bringing marketing um, and some level of expertise that is going to allow the community to avoid hiring an outside independent consultant that will fight with Axiom about you know our numbers or who we are, why we're doing what we're doing, and not fight. But <laughs> Hold me accountable. Yeah. Challenge. Yeah. So I like, and the reason they're taking that approach is because I've been annoyed with the consultants who have been, uh, I can't remember, you know, the owner's representative, the town's representative, these consultants are getting jobs doing that. And all they do is add cost. They claim that they save money. It's not true. All they do is add cost. So the town has the state behind them in the case of Lubeck or in the case of anybody who would be applying, the towns would have the state behind them. They wanna see the success of the project. And if they bring resources on the backside to make sure that when Axiom says it's this type of equipment in the CO, that somebody opens that hood up and says, yep, yeah, that's the equipment that Axiom said they were gonna put in there. And that's what, exactly what they put in there is all you really need. I mean, is the is the stuff going to fall off the poles? Reasonable, right? But you know that kind of thing. You don't need fifty thousand dollars worth of consulting to get that. So I think that that's where the state's mindset is around this, and they're testing this out in Lubeck, and and they're gonna, I think, export that to other communities. So. In regards to your $5,000 grant and what the resources are, Kendra Joe is the person, Kendra Joe Girindle, who used to be at the Island Institute, she's the community person, is the person that is sort of putting together resources, I think, from their team standpoint on how to help communities work through these, these well, you'll planning see grants. Well, the application that at least I did for Wisconsin, maybe you did as well, um, Judy, that, um, we didn't have, I, I was glad we didn't have to put a budget and figure this out ourselves, that we just had to tell our need. And I told them we needed everything. Um, so then they're going to have to decide how many resources we get. You know, but they say it's $10,000 per community. So ultimately, this group could have $30,000. I knew I should have charged more. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but but are they are they going to be giving us that money to no, spend? No, no, it's it, it's it's their calculation of the money. But that's good. We don't have to, as Mark said, we don't have to deal with it. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Yeah, in, in fact, in the case of uh, Lubeck, I think can't remember how this worked because I'm. But they were. Did this come through Island Institute to the state? I can't remember, but. It, uh, they were granted X amount of dollars. They got a letter, congratulations. But the vast majority of that money is not going to the broadband committee. Like, I can't remember, I'll just make this up a little bit, but let's say they got a $15,000 grant of which they're gonna get $3,000 and the rest of the money is gonna be used for predetermined things that are gonna be help the community move forward like marketing. I don't remember, and that's the model I think they're trying to use. They're gonna, they're gonna, you know, cookie cut and say, okay, this community needs these things, and I, we have these resources, and this is how it's gonna come to you. I think that's what they're trying to do, as opposed to leaving it up to your own devices about how you spend your money. People have questions. Any questions? If, if we, if we start out as the as the region. Um, and someplace along the line, after things have been built, can can we decide that we would really rather have just been than individual towns and step away from the region? From a technology standpoint, no. Because if you're going to build as a region, you're likely going to build the systems 
to fit the region and maybe even be expand beyond the three towns, as opposed to starting out as individual communities, the technology becomes a little bit of it, the technology planning becomes a little bit different. So for example, if I have a central office in Woolwich, um, I may be running 864 number of fibers coming out of that because I have to serve all three communities. And I'm starting with a big pipe and I'm gradually working to a small pipe. If I'm working only in Woolwich and I don't have to serve the other two communities, I might start with a 144 count pipe. So it changes the dynamics of the, the cost of the, of the practical technical aspects. Relatively speaking, can you decouple and couple? Yes, I, you know, in, in theory, you can do that, but it makes it, it, it's not practically, it's going to be very challenging. Not technically feasible. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me the challenge is. Technically, you could do it individually because if you had a central, say, in Woolwich and you split it out from there, there's, there's, there's the beginnings. I used to be able to tell you, yeah. So the question is, sorry, person on uh, Tommy. Tommy uh, hold on one second. I'll answer the question, then you can ask. But uh, I used to say, yes, you get economies of scale going regional. I don't believe that's the case anymore because the cost of high count fiber is so expensive and is so delayed we're almost starting to think about dumbing down our designs so that you don't get over a 144 count fiber in the network because it's easier to get and it's a lot less expensive than those high count ribbon fibers. So today, as we sit here, and I think for the next two to three years, you it's probably less expensive to do the projects individually, even with the additional cost of each CO being separated, right? You need three huts, you need three sets of equipment, you need three backups, you need three, and God, that's expensive. Well, it is, but it's not as expensive as high count fiber. It also makes you less vulnerable, potentially, because high count fiber that's serving everybody for even a mile, that mile is pretty darn vulnerable. You cut that fiber, right, within some kind of catastrophic storm or something, and all three towns are down, potentially. It becomes a little bit of a nightmare. And I don't know who's going to fight over where the central office is going to go. You know, each town's going to want to some piece of that or try to determine what their percentage of cost is and all of that makes it quite challenging to do regional projects. Unless you form a utility and you say, These, this utility is above the towns. The towns are not involved anymore at the level that you would think they would be involved. Instead, the utility is the entity that's gonna move this forward. and. Therefore, the utility is going to make what's in the best interest of the utility, not to individual town politics. And where is that happening? Nowhere, <laughs> except potentially uh, there's a five town consortium that is uh, working. They sent out an RFP and they are moving forward as a five towns um, Palamo, Freedom, Liberty, Montville, and Sears Mott? So what's the uh, legal organizational structure of the DBU in comparison? If you know. I can't imagine. It seems to me the decision about whether which one is a good idea is less about sharing the cost of infrastructure than it is about having to share the decision making and and the operational, you know, the ongoing operational policy and decisions that will no longer be in the control of one town. Uh, and I, I mean, I, we would need to know what, what it, you know, what it would be like. So once you have a three town system in place, 10 years down the road, what kinds of decisions are the three towns going to have to cooperate on and agree on, you know, that, that's the thing that worries me that, that, 
the that left. Was just, that, that was just, sorry, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm done, go ahead. I was just going to say that's exactly why forming a bud is important because you now have a legal entity that is not directly connected to the three towns potentially. So 10 years from now, the decisions are going to be made by the bud board, whoever is on that bud board, not by the three towns. Yeah. So the borrowing of the money that would be required has to come from some other entity other than backed by the full faith of the towns if the towns aren't going to be in control. This is where it gets even more complicated. Because you have to go revenue bond. That's you have to go revenue bond and you have, to, you have to sell this at the bonding level that there's competency at the bud level to execute. And usually that would require at least a very competent ISP sitting next to you saying, this is what, who would be, let's call it the white labeled ISP that would be working on behalf of the, and with the towns. And they would be the ones who would be doing the operational day to day. They would be the ones who would be potentially even hooking up new customers and other ISPs would be running on the network that's being operated by an ISP that's with the bud. That's at least the vision for this five pounds. This is the vision of GWI, GWI's vision of how they see these things working. I've also seen what GWI's proposal is, it's complicated. Are, are they working with those plans? I, I don't know if they've been formally approved. But like what's the comparison? The other bud in. Um, yeah, so to, to Evan's point about DBU, Down East Broadband yeah, Utility, yeah, it's two towns. They pretend to work together, they do not. They're two separate systems. So it's not quite clear how the finances work. You should talk to Danny Sullivan up there, but even then, he's not particularly clear. They have about a 20% take rate there it's not been particularly successful and they haven't attracted a second uh, another uh isp they have pioneer who's there sort of the, the the isp that's working with the dbu and they're the ones who have about 500 customers on that network but um they originally couldn't go with the revenue bond so the towns did have to, as i understood had to do a general application bond but they were desperate enough that they would do it so I mean, I just don't feel, feel like it's been a successful model, not for what the vision was. Now, they have fiber? Yes, absolutely. And does is the system functioning? Yes, it's functioning and working. So kudos to them. They got it done and they've got fiber. So good. But the towns are on the hook. I mean. Towns are on the hook, which means, you know, so what are you getting when you have a board above the towns when the towns are really the ones who have to be in control because they're the ones with the with the necks on the line for the lending seems more semantics than what actually i'm a pretty straightforward guy typically when it comes to these things like one provider one town get it done if you think you can do it regionally great you can maybe save some money i don't think so but i maybe what do you get? Well, you get some benefit at the state applying for grants. You do get that for sure, hundred percent. They'd like to see regional projects. You do get that. So do you have a more likely chance of getting money? They say you do. I've never not gotten money with all of my single town projects. So I'm waiting for that to happen. You're gonna be publicly owned one way or the other, likely. So you get benefit for that. I don't know. I just. I struggle with six months of argument over forming a bud and how that's all gonna work and everything. I don't mean argument in a bad way, but just working through all of those details and to the, Dusty? Tommy. Tommy, to Tommy's point, who's Dusty? Somebody, hi Dusty. Uh, so to Tommy's point, you know, what happens 10 years from now, that's how people in town start to think who are on select boards and such. So what happened with Nick Coast? They were on their way, and when I went on their website, there didn't seem to be much activity. They had 
several towns, and I know they were bidding for that Lambo group, and I guess didn't get them to join them. Do you know what's happening? No, I don't know much about it anymore. I did all the planning there, as you know, and I know Deb Hall very, very well. And I haven't talked to her in maybe six months. So yeah, it seems you know. like it's going, I'll give her a call, but that was the other one that was, didn't they form a bug? Yeah. Yeah, maybe they'll be applying, I don't know. You know what I mean, to this round, but they're not, they're not eligible at least in the four towns, because they have fiber there and Otelco's building and consolidated building fiber into those towns, so. Yeah. Well, when you started, you mentioned uh, Spectrum, how to, deal with, how to deal with Spectrum. Yeah. So I thought that one of the big barriers for each one of your towns is answering the question why why are you doing this why are you spending all this time on this i have great coverage i'm covered i have spectrum it's working just fine what the hell are you people doing and now you're now you're asking me to borrow three million dollars what is the, what what's the need and so what i did was what i've started to do is put together the answer to all of the spectrum arguments for you. And then, and this can change because I'm not the brightest brain in the room. Others might have things to say about this and we can move this to, to say whatever it needs to say. But I think in your report, and it will be the first report I've ever done this way. I think we just need to hit spectrum head on because they're not a, a, a good actor in the marketplace. And I think that from a committee standpoint or from a group standpoint, you at least need to know what those arguments are on both sides, what Spectrum says and what you would say in response to those Spectrum arguments. Just, and if you don't get there, you don't get there in your communities, but this is, you, you need to have, you need to be armed to be able to respond. We already have sentiment that came out informally at the polls. Um, some people, some people just couldn't care less about Brian. But, um, uh, but also the, the survey that we did, I mean, we were cut, we had 85% spectrum cable, but how, I forgot what the percentage of food might think. There were something like um, at least 50% of that or more were dissatisfied with, the, with their internet. I don't know how many, I don't know how many of those are the cable. The question will be, I'm making the number up, are they 3 million unsatisfied? Because as yeah. soon as you attach a financial number to it, that's the difference in perception. Mm -hmm. Just by itself, nobody's happy with Spectrum for a variety of reasons. Nobody's happy with Consolidated. Nobody's happy with Axiom. You know, ISPs get banged around all the time, although I think they're happier with us than they are with Spectrum, but you know, I don't know. Um, but that's really where you're, 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 where the rubber's gonna hit the road. When you get this report and it says, okay, the build out was cast at $10 million. And that means you're gonna need to have a $6 million bond. And that's gonna cost X amount of dollars for 20 years. That's gonna be a different conversation than do you like Spectrum or don't you? Because <clears throat> that's gonna, yeah. yeah. So, I would say two, so a couple of things following on. So what I have here, which I will send to everybody, which I don't have everybody's email, but maybe you sent it, I can't find uh, it. Anyway, I need, a, I need it again if you didn't, if you yeah. already did it, I'm embarrassed. Anyway, so what I did was I did, first off I did cable DV versus, cable TV versus fiber optics. What are the benefits of each and what are, what are the down, what, 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 are, what does that mean? Then I did, um, Facts, you know, here's what, you know, here's what Spectrum says about their network. Here are the facts of the technology. Here are the facts of how you argue for a different kind of technology than what you get are getting with coaxial cable. Then, so there's about two pages of that. Then I have um, a section on digital equity and cutting the cord. Here's how you help people better understand the value of what a fiber network could do for them or how to utilize the fiber network in a way that helps you save money. 
and helps you do other things that are real world, 21st century, modern ways in which people work or play or educate. Um, and so I put that in there and I have pretty little pictures and things like that. And then I put, then I have a section which I think is gonna be critical. This came from Southport and I left it in here as Southport, but basically they did a cost comparison. I'll pass this around. They did a cost comparison of what people are getting with Spectrum and what it would look like if they had fiber and how they could save money. And, and you know, how do you use YouTube? And how do you, you know, all very practical, like if I don't have Spectrum, what am I gonna have? You know, uh, kind of thing. These are practical questions that people ask. And then I put a whole section in here that also has a whole bunch of potential savings, but also list, um, list uh, you can just play around with it, um, list a whole bunch of all of the things that are available to, that, that help you can get in streaming services when you're on fiber, the kinds of things you can get is just almost unlimited nowadays. And I've got a whole plethora and it's not even up to date. It needs to be revised. I wrote that maybe a year ago. I tried to, maybe I revised it sooner than that, but it's still, changing it's yet. changing all the time. And, you know, free stuff and, and you know, sports and local TV and everything that you used to be a barrier is no longer a barrier anymore. You can get it all and you can a la carte it in a way that helps you save money than what you're getting now in an, what I would describe as an old stale technology and, and business model where we sell you a hundred channels for this much. These are the only channels you get. Oh, you want ESPN? That's another $40 for this package. Oh, you want HBO? Oh, that's another X amount of dollars for this package. It's as opposed to buying everything individually and starting to curate your own viewing. And then basically you can throw it overboard in 30 days and do it all over again if you want, because there's no contracts or anything. You know, you binge on billions for a month and then you go off to build binge on Homeland on another streaming service. So whatever it is, you, you have all that available. This is where the world is going. It's absolutely where the world is going. So that's, that's where I, that's gonna be contained in here. And so that you have all of those arguments. And to me, it's three pillars. It's one is, how do I fight against spectrum? Two, how do I show people the value of what fiber is? And three, um, how does that value translate to an individual in their home? How do I, as a homeowner, obtain that value? That's it. So that's that. And, um, you know, we call it cutting the cord in big terms, but what we what I found is I'm never prepared because I can't believe that I get the questions I get, how little people really understand the technology at all. All they know is spectrum consolidated axiom came in, put a box in their house somewhere and they turned on the television and it worked. That's basically what people idea of what this is going on now. I mean, I've had questions directly to me that said, my TV is blank right now. There's nothing on it. What happens? Like I had to walk somebody through right from what kind of TV do you have? Do you own a Roku? Is it a smart TV? To how you obtain Netflix? How do you watch Netflix? What, why don't I have a clicker? How do I use it? You know, I mean, it's all the way through. So you get that because I think it's really needed. You will not be successful in this unless you can convince people that this new way is the right way. So we're going to, that's your test. And one of the things that I think all of you should be thinking about is looking at that cost comparison and to doing that in your own towns so that you have a good idea because somebody is going to raise their hand and say, I have spectrum for $39.99. And you're going to say back to them, no, you might have it now because you just signed up for it. That's disingenuous. What you really have is 110 
And because Mary Jo over here has 110, that's what happened to her. And that's what this thing is gonna cost you. It's not gonna be 39.99. So you don't get to stand up and just say things that aren't really, that are misleading. Those are the kinds of things you're gonna to need to be able to do, frankly, and challenge in a nice way, but because people are gonna be all over the place. I get, you know, phone for X amount of dollars. I get this, you know, it's not really saving me money and all. You're gonna save money on fiber. You just need to prove it. Yeah, I just cut the card a couple of months ago. And um, I don't know if they're making a sense. You can pass these on. My bill was $65 a month for 40 bucks on the phone. Yeah. They want to teach you. How do you beat that? Yeah. And then they sent me a thing yesterday. $29.99, I can have eight channels of my choice. Desperate, desperate monopoly. There you go. So good, you know. Unless they know I'm on the floor. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so again, if that's what's gonna, if if all you get out of all your effort is that, that's better than what you had last year when they weren't feeling threatened and they didn't know they were just giving you what they were giving you, and that's tough. Raising prices, giving you, you know, now they're being much more aggressive. That's a good thing in the marketplace. It's good for everybody. So that's that's fine. But I wanted to just at least make sure you, you were as armed as you could be, because this will be the question, the central question. Um, what I'm passing around now is sort of the frame, the beginning. And uh, forgive me, you're not all getting one, but I'll pass it this way. Are you sending them digitally? Yeah, I'm going to send everything digitally. Is this is what the, the this thing is going to look like? The beginnings of what this 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 um, report is going to look like. And so take a look through that. It's a really good sort of overview of how the different parts of the report are going to come together. Um, so in, in there is another, what I'm thinking is the thing I sent away around first, sorry for somebody who's on the yeah, Tommy. Sorry, Tommy. You don't get to see this stuff, but I don't know. yeah, okay. the first thing I passed around that single document with all the spectrum stuff that I think that's going to fit right after what you have in your hand is going to come after that. And then after that is going to be your individual plans. Although it's likely I'm going to sandwich in an argument for a regional bud, or at least understanding what that looks like and public ownership and probably going to sandwich in something around the vetro mapping that I talked about earlier. Maybe that comes within each individual plan or maybe it comes separately before I get to the individual plans and the appendices. I'm not quite sure yet, but that's what I'm that's what I'm working on now. So you could there's somebody in here was very skeptical I was doing something. So I just wanted to make sure I brought paper <laughs> with me. I don't know who it was. Anyway, I'm sure. Uh, he's, which not, is no, he's, not here today. he's not here today. Oh, yeah. No, I'm I don't. Sure he'll be I, to know he showed up. I'm actually came. Uh, so, yeah. So, um, the stuff about, um, oh, your the competitiveness for the grants and the kind of stuff you were talking about, it wouldn't be bad to have that in there either about positioning um, advantages, disadvantages of where. <laughs> Our three towns stand compared to some of the ones that are definitely un unserved. And I don't know how far you could go on that. Um, but getting this in quickly to me is a real advantage because I'm, I, I don't think they're going to have enough places that are ready for the build out where we might have an opportunity that we might not have had as easily later. I but think, we're not going, we're going for 23, you know, it's really 23, we're not obviously ready for that. Right, so I think that's right. I think that the, the vetro mapping that's associated with the application will be the cornerstone of a little discussion around here, here are the elements. Part of that is going to come after I actually put in these applications, which was, needs to be by November 9th. I have three applications that we're putting in. The three different towns. So once that happens, 
I'll feel like I have a good handle on what the application process is going to be and how things get weighted. It's all on paper too. You can all go look at it. But I think the homework for this group is only really based on is to try to figure out what that cost of spectrum versus what that what what does that look like in your towns right now so that you can put that cost comparison together for each of your towns that's directly related to your towns to me that's the one thing that i will not i can't do that I, you, you need to go figure out what the cost of it and to your point what spectrum is offering now or how they're changing or what they those kinds of anecdotal sort of things are going to be important to know and then so that we can put together something that really looks like, okay, a cost comparison that makes sense to people of, we can really argue that you're gonna save money. And I think those other points that you made are perfectly fine. We can sort of get that together from a, from a grant perspective of what your advantages are, disadvantage. Got another question, but I wanna see if anybody else has a question. Anybody else have questions you want? Um, I, I have questions, but not, you know, they're just general confusion questions. Um, so. Go ahead, get it clear. Well, uh, we keep talking about a watershed moment when each of the towns will be coming to a decision about whether to go forward individually, whether to go forward as, as a unit, um, and, and the convincing effort that has to uh, precede that uh, in order to get a body of citizens in favor of this project. When and where and how does that happen? I, I, I just, I mean, because we keep talking about it, but then I don't see any, you know, any point where we're actually doing it. And we get closer every day with the finished report and then seeing how the next grant round gets accomplished. And as more information gets to us, the closer we get to action. <coughs> But how many outside of this room in our in our individual towns even know that this is going on? Good question. That's why I like Mark's approach because he talks about how we're going to convince the people. Yeah. They're the first ones we need to convince. They can convince your selectmen that they need it. But if, if you're going to convince the selectmen and then expect them to convince the townspeople, it won't happen. Good point. Very good point. I, I kind of think good. it's premature to do it. Until we get Mark's report and have the numbers. Oh, I, I don't, I don't question that at all. Um, but I'm just trying to envision what the venue might look like in which we would begin to try to transform public opinion. Would that be a public hearing that we would be hosting for people to come and attend, or, or you know, we had talked about doing the coffee clutches and the mini clubs and things like that. But I, you know, like. All of the above. Yeah, I think okay. it's going to be Start out with, with the public get together and then have all the people that uh, hate it show up, share their grievances, and then. We, I think that we circles. need to do an awful lot more educating before we and have a public forum where we invite all the people away to show up. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, right. I'm going to come down to how I understand the town to work. This is going to come down to a special town meeting. The people who have the most interest are going to come in and either vote it in or vote it out. And if you don't have the public support first, it ain't going to happen. Right. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. And, and do we have time to organize? Yeah, I was yes. just going to. So, to you. We have to make time. <laughs> so, to remind me of a guy that I used to know. So, um, I like this guy. Uh, the, uh, so, the. Let's say you're going to go for a grant and the grant round is in March. If you do that, that means you need to have approval for your match before you apply for the grant in writing or in vote in your towns to move forward. So think about that from a timeline as we sit here today. No, let's call it November 1st. You think it will be March or will it be pushed out or, or they're talking March? Because that's really quick. To get what you're talking about. They announced this grant round on October 9th. They had a information meeting on the 14th and it's due on November 9th. Less than 30 days. And 
the decisions they say are going to be made by January 1st. Well, they got to get the money out. So that's what the and so and this is up to 40 million, I think is what they said, something like that. So I think that if it could be March, it could be April, it could be May, June, I don't know. But I, I would think that you're going to be, and it goes right to a special town meeting to get that vote. Not only will you need to vote on the money, but you probably have to vote on allowing the select boards or the councils to negotiate contracts and stuff like that also has to be on there. You probably have to do something about uh, some, you know, if it's forming a bud, some approval of that. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna have quite a heavy lift. Yeah, that's really hard. We've also got a bigger regional meeting scheduled for four weeks from now with Consolidated, which is gonna include people from a few other towns. Consolidated well. spectrum under Consolidated City. Oh, that's that's all Lincoln County. This um, um, sounds Lincoln County. Western Lincoln County. Oh, just Western. So every because Newcastle, Newcastle in that way, it's all LCI except for Walterboro. Um, so are we being invited to that region? Yep, that's yeah. what we talked about last last meeting when we were trying to find a date. Oh, I don't know if you're okay. at that, that point or not. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm pretty sure we decided on the 14th of November, which is a Monday. I have to double check that. But anyway, yeah. So then, but we'll have a meeting with their rep and then a week later, we might have more numbers from you. So, but yeah, if you've got any input as far as, that's our other quick avenue because that's the other incumbent in all of these towns. I mean, Fidium could do exactly the same thing as expected. Um, Evan would say, but there will be competition with cable from Spectrum with Fidium yep. coming in. And it's a lot lower price tag, ideally. Or they're doing that as a teaser for getting into the marketplace. Well, they're already here, so it's just a matter of. So they're not on this passive. I mean, no, but I mean, consolidated owns all of the lines, so it's just yeah. overlashing, is what I'm saying. So this, this reminds me, uh, I, I was at a leadership program about, God knows, a decade ago or so. And um, the, the uh, speaker was talk, telling us, talking to us about how, how we could manage the future, you know, and so. You know, and he said, all you need to do is to learn how to manage the VUCA principle, you know, and, and, and so he had V, big V, big U, big C, big A written down, you know, one side of the page. And he said, if you can manage this, you're going to do fine over the next five years. And this was well over 10 years ago. And everybody was managing, oh my God, you know, if you learn to manage this principle, we've got it, we've got it, you know. And so then he said, and, and here's the principle, he flips the page over, and V is for volatility, U is for uncertainty, C is for chaos, and A is for ambiguity. So, <laughs> so I think that describes sort of where we're at right now. We're managing volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity. And, and I think you're right. I think getting the report is probably the beginning of managing that book of principles. So, so question mark, um, if we know idiom is a possibility, um, and but this committee would rather possibly have its own networks, ownership, local ownership. Do you have an argument about fitting in terms of if we go a direction that says we really think we need a publicly owned utility or whatever, public ownership? Is, is it a similar argument? We don't have the track record yet of how, what the price is, things like that. Have you come up with this? Not really. The way the, I think the arguments around FIDIUM are they're going to give you an all fiber network at a very competitive price. That's what they're going to bring. So you're going to be generally not, you will never get anything that you're considering past in any of your towns if FIDIUM comes from my perspective. However, if you have a say as a community in Fidium's 
willingness. The argument is one, don't come unless you're going to serve everybody. Two, don't come if you're going to be the same crappy company that you were before. And don't try to pretend that Fidium is different. You're consolidated. What's different now about your customer service, about how you repair things, how you fix things, what? And third, what kind of guarantee or tell me what the real price of the service is two years from now? Oh, you did a good job right there. <laughs> That's how I would approach them. And I, I and and also if they need, I mean, they're saying, I think that, or Evan's been the one in touch, where they, they will come in and just do it, even though we don't have the density, like a campus or Rockport or wherever else they're going. Um, but yeah, I think they're, yeah, I think, and Mark, I probably agree with me on this, is that they, they have a market share right still, you know, with DSL, and they're going to get squeezed. So they're out and they made a decision, whatever, eight or so months ago, whether they're just going to declare bankruptcy for the hundredth time as this company is, or they're going to put some money down and they sold a lot of their interests in other areas. And they're like, all right, we're going to try and not get squeezed and put down a yeah. solid footprint. And, Great. Yeah. So I've talked to um, Simon Thorne, the government relations person, whatever his title is. Yeah. And, uh, it's interesting because obviously they went into Portland and Bangor and a few other places and then where they got grants, but um, they just got squeezed out of Bath and Brunswick. That's something that Tommy and I were talking about because that's hotel code going into Bath and Brunswick. So yep. yeah, they really need, they're, they're getting surrounded from every, every direction. So they're going to, they're going to build somewhere without even consulting with some town somewhere. It's just a matter of, yeah, what the density looks like and what the, so it doesn't matter about density because it's an opportunity cost because they're going to lose forever if they don't yeah, it see. costs more to not do anything than it does to lose money for 10 yeah. years it's, it's just like over. yeah it's just exactly it's just like owning an nfl team you lose money for 40 years and then you sell it and then make a three thousand percent profit on that one thing so it's just like all that stuff yeah I, yeah, that's that, that's going to be a challenge. Where are they going? How far are they penetrating? And what is what is it? What does it mean from a consumer standpoint? Two years from now, three years from now, you know, a lot of promises get made up front. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you really care about those. Yeah, so, this one's going to be hard. Well, I mean, and nothing wrong. Know. Listen, nothing wrong with Fidium. Nothing wrong with relatively speaking consolidated i know all of them i know simon i know their people i mean they're normal people who live in maine right these are just doing their thing so this is not like the big bad you know boogeyman or anything but it's just a matter of when consolidated and spectrum get together and form a new cartel and say this is our this is our bottom and we're not ever going to i mean i mentioned in this yes. in this stuff you know the three major cable companies in the united states do not overlap that is not by coincidence. Yeah. So here, the question will be, it, you know, is this going to be a fierce competition between Spectrum and or Fidium, Consolidated, whatever? Mm -hmm. I, you know, that's what it's shaping up to be. And, you know, from a state's perspective, this is not for you guys because you don't sit in this area, but for people like me, from a, or from a state's perspective, it's like same old, same old. Investing in places that have already been invested in again and again and again while leaving everybody else out. They're not investing in places where I, they're not in New Back. Yep. They're not in uh, where Wayne, where, where I'm, you know, they're not. I mean, Georgetown, I have a thousand customers in Georgetown that we're hooking up right now to fiber. That's consolidated DSL, super crappy, worse, as bad as it gets. They didn't decide to invest in Georgetown or stop me there. So instead they're gonna build through the Route 1 corridor up in the most lucrative areas, I don't know. So is, is a scenario that they come in and they do exactly that trick bit and then there's a role for the town to pick up the crumbs. 
That's the question. Those are the questions to ask. Because, you know, from, from a company like Axiom, right, we work at the 300 home level, you know? So, you know, if you needed another provider to come in and fill in, it's not out of the realm of possibility to have that happen, but it just creates a little bit of, you know, it's a little messy in your towns when that happens. I like working with one provider, you know, Northport, I did the planning there. They wanted Axiom to come in and I insisted that they work with GWI, even though they didn't like GWI as much as they liked Axiom at the time. I, I'm putting words in their mouth. That's not how it came out. But generally speaking, they were a little bit more comfortable with me because I had done all the planning. But I was like, GWI, you don't want multiple providers in multiple parts of your town with multiple pricing structures and all of that, even though it's fiber, we're two different companies, it's just kind of messy for your town. Just work with GWI. So why wasn't GWI doing the whole thing? Or what was it for? Long story, okay. <laughs> long story. But, you know, so I think you're gonna be challenged one way or the other in this big meeting, we'll tell some things anyway about what's possible, yeah. what, what's not possible. And hopefully I'll have a full report to you by Thanksgiving and you'll be off to the races and making some determinations. Are you going to give us any, you started off saying the, the stuff up front, the cost analysis, the, the construction analysis, can you give us an idea of what, between now and Thanksgiving, which is not that far away, will you be giving us any of that information? I wasn't, but I can. I mean, I'm not bothered. As soon as I have it, I can show it to yeah, you. Yeah, and maybe any preliminary thoughts about it. That would be interesting. Or does that make us scared or something? It's going to make you scared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good thing is, I don't know what, if, if you know the number of homes, I don't know. Tell me one of your towns what the number of homes are. Times it by seven hundred. That's what you're gonna get for. Yeah. You haven't had that. It you got it. I got it all right here. Let yeah. me just hit multiply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dresden five hundred sixty-two thousand one hundred. Cheap. Okay. Woolwich. Cheap. Nine hundred five thousand one hundred. More expensive. Wiscasset. These are households, not housing units. Right. Was gas at 1.1 million, 71,800. 1 million, 100,000. Of what we would have to pay. Of what your match would be. To how what? Much, how much will we pay to match that? That's what, well, this is the, what we're talking about is the minimum. So uh, I'm guessing you're going to be close to at least 80% match, 80% uh, grant. To that match. So no. that's that's the thing that might sell. It, it might. Because mm -hmm. they've been supporting the airport for years. It might. On federal grants. So let, it's a deal. Yeah, let me. It's going to be a good deal. That is very important. I was basing my grant um, request or planning on fifty percent match. 30% match at best, and this is better than that, the $700 per pass number. So that is, a, 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 that's in your favor. For, for some people in town, um, I don't know what word, does the lofty higher argument, this is the technology of the future, this is economic development, this is being able to, you know, those kinds of bigger goals for the town. Does that resonate with this is a really good deal? Or how far into the town could that resonate? Not very. I don't find it to be particularly moving. I most people don't understand that people have come to your towns and decided not to live here because they couldn't get internet or good internet where they are were or that you don't have no idea what the opportunity cost to attract business is or would have been able to attract business. You, there's nothing tangible about that. So people don't really buy it. They don't understand it. And you say, well, look at Chattanooga. And they go, yeah, Chattanooga. That, yeah. And you say, oh, look at a gig, Kansas City. And yeah, that's Kansas City. They're never gonna, you know, unless you have a concrete main example of 
you know, Toyota came to Amazon's big thing came to Portland, Maine because they had fiber and they have gate workers. And you're never going to get any traction around that. I think a few people understand it's limited, it's narrow. A few people understand what a fiber network can bring and why it's important. And it's all spelled out in the documents I sent along. But does the issue of fairness carry any weight? That does. I think social justice issues really play well. Now, not with everybody, <laughs> but I, I, it, that does resonate. Why should my, one family on my one side of the, the, the divide get something and the other one doesn't? That's not fair. We need to do better as a town. It's harder when you have full spectrum covered, generally speaking, to make that argument. You know, you, now you're making uh, you're, you're making the argument instead of um, we're sick and tired of monopoly companies taking advantage of our citizens. That's a better that resonates, and they're pretending. You know, all of a sudden we decide to to put on in our own broadband, and oh my God, they they found religion. They're giving me 300 megs instead of, they're upgrading everybody to 300 megs instead of 100 megs. They're, they're giving you whatever it is, X, Y, Z, introductory offers, all this stuff, all of a sudden. You think they're doing that out of the goodness of their heart because they care about what's Cassidy or making that up or Woolwich or whatever? Of course not. They're making a business case to keep their monopoly. I, there's some argument for that, but it's usually coupled with but you're going to make us spend a million dollars to get something else. And by the way, I mean, this is me on the other side now, because I've been on the, I've been in the room where, they, you know, uh, and by the way, I don't think you're going to get those take rates. And what happens when you don't cover the cost of that bond? Who's going to be on the hook then? Well, taxpayers, right? Taxpayers, right? Taxpayers, right? Taxpayers are on there. Uh, 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 uh. You know, that's what's going to happen. So you're going to have to now how big that contingency is in each of your towns. Those screens is, you know, better than I. There are 25 of them, though, for sure, in every one of your towns who are going to be hell no, no matter what. So at town meeting, any town meeting all the time, doesn't matter. Even if you try to sneak it into the middle of the night. They're going to be 25 hell no's at that meeting, generally speaking. I say that as a general number. I don't know, you know, whatever it is, but that's you're going to face that. He's so it was 28. But no. Oh, it's 28. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you just had a hell no meeting, so you know, you're going to have to be very persuasive. I do this in my sleep, so I know how to answer and stuff, and I still get massacred in rooms. Yeah. Massacred. I mean, this happened in South Florida. I just absolutely let it, you know, I had this thing go, I, I've had this happen two or three times. I mean, I I was in a meeting, should be, we're moving forward with it. We've gotten a grant, we're moving forward, it's Axie and we're all there. I was in the meeting in should be maybe a year and a half ago. And in the first two minutes, I was dead. Literally the first thing somebody said, I said, oh man, I am done and I got absolutely obliterated didn't matter what I said no it was done an hour and a half of just taking the arrows all the way through I was like well there you go so it does happen you what know changed, what changed it? you had a group of citizens threaten the select board that one way or another they were going to get it done with this select board or another select board you decide, select board. We have enough people to do this. That's interesting. Yeah. Just good old fashioned organizing. Yeah, always works. You got to bring out the Margaret Mead quote, right? You know, never right. doubt that a small group of thoughtful, yeah. committed citizens can change the That's world. Right. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. I thought that was Eleanor Roosevelt, but okay, Margaret. Margaret? All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trust me. All right. <laughs> At the levels that they're offering these grants, though, I, you know, you can really tell a story that's pretty convincing. For example, I was just looking this up. A fire truck costs about the same as what Woolwich would have to pay for broadband. Correct. That's a pretty good story. I like that. That's my argument. I always use the fire truck argument. It's a great argument. 
Yeah. You know, so I agree with that. I use the internet every day. We don't I just think you're, you know, you've got to get through the mirage of the, the morass of what is Spectrum really doing? What is consolidated Fidium doing? And what does our plan look like in comparison to those things? And how does that fit? And can we get this through given the minimal amount of, I mean, uh, a, a, a 20 year bond payment, a, a yearly bond payment for a million dollars over 20 years is somewhere in the $110,000, $120,000 a year range. It is not that big. So when people talk about, oh, it's a $6 million project and they, they can't get their mind wrapped around that because there's small towns and nobody's ever spent $6 million, you, you say, you remind them of, well, five of that is being covered by the state for free. And this extra million dollars is not really a million dollars. It's $120,000 a year. And even if we fall short by our projections of subscribers, that's going to be X. Let's say we don't get to 300 subscribers. We only get to 290. I'm making only get to 290. That's $2,000 gap. That's not a million dollar gap. No, all does not fall apart because you didn't make your payment. You're not going to not make your payment. It's a matter of degree, you know? So that's really, th those are the arguments. I've been testing that one in the marketplace. Now it's gone pretty well. So when you include that in our study, you know, if some, mm -hmm. a couple of scenarios. Not don't good. know. I don't like doing that because I like it to be a little bit more, I'm being a little bit out on the limb, even with the spectrum stuff in here. I, just, yeah. I tip, typically try to be a little agnostic, but I'm getting so tired of the, 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 the big boys that I've started to not take my gloves off a little bit. So maybe, I don't know. A lot of times, so I'll tell you what I have done for some time. I, I won't name the town. <laughs> they were going to negotiate with somebody, with a provider. And I, beyond my report, wrote them a four page memo on how you would approach that and said, I will give this to you, but it's not going to be part of your regular report. You can use it as you see fit. If it has to be public, it's public, but I don't want that as part of the report. I will give it to you. Here's your arguments. And so I did do that for one community and uh, that was recent. So um, I, maybe I could do that for if, if there was a need to start with it, but you're going to have a lot, by the way, what I just circulated just by itself is kind of a lot. I'm used to it. So I read through it and it's like, oh, this is pretty simple, straightforward. And, but when you start reading it, you're like, Ooh, it's kind of a lot of details here. So, and that's just the beginning. So you're going to, you're going to have a lot to absorb, but in a lot of questions as you move forward, and it's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. I'll do the best I can to keep answering and working and working with you. I mean, I don't like to leave anybody. So whatever it takes, we'll, we'll get you there. Mm -hmm. At least to put your best foot forward yeah. or not have you be embarrassed. I mean, listen, I don't want anybody in this room. I want everybody in this room to know what they're talking about so that they have what they need to at least be super credible. Um, I think there's always danger in people who don't do the details in these kinds of environments because they don't they don't do well once once the questions start coming. I have uh, a question that so I was asked that I asked at the last meeting and I got what was an encouraging answer, but I'm wondering where it might fit in terms of our economic arguments to the unconvinced, um, and that had to do with the ability of a municipal, um, you know, broadband district to not have to pay the poll permit fees. Mm -hmm. And does that actually have a dollar amount that we could project attached to it? Yes, it does. So we yeah. could figure out what that, yeah. So if we go this way, folks, you know, not only will it, you know, will be costing this, but we're also in line to save this much more. Yeah, you will have that. Great. Number, no problem. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. And how about after we pay this all off, assuming we get through 20 years, it becomes a revenue source, right? Or you said it doesn't because there's so much maintenance. Depends. 
It depends. I'm going to do that analysis for you, so you'll see, you'll you'll know whether or not there's surplus dollars. But those surplus dollars typically go for two things nowadays. One is um, a self insurance pool, which I like in New York size towns, maybe closer to 100,000 as opposed to 50,000. In some of my smaller communities, I like to get to 50,000, 10,000 a year set aside. Um, I would do more than that if I were in each of your communities. It doesn't have to be $100,000, but you should have a good chunk of change over the next five years put aside. And secondly, you've got insurance costs every year, which is somewhere generally in the $15,000 a year range, something like that. Um, for uh, that's insurance for the pole leasing which we might be able to avoid over time, which you may not have, but it's we're gonna to have to challenge it at the PUC, which I think we are going to. When I say we, I say me and some town. So probably Somerville is gonna challenge that. We've got the letter all put together. So it might be some savings there eventually. And so the question will be, and, and that, that self-insurance thing also is there for, uh, equipment replacement, something in the central office fails. We'll have a spare there, but replacing the spare of the spare will be something that you will have to do as owner. So those kinds of things, we, you know, so it's a little bit challenging to create a real revenue source, but it's possible, depends. You're, you're at a big enough scale potentially where you could come to uh, especially given the the um, the match issue, which is much smaller than I would have anticipated three months ago, so there might be some monies there <clears throat> or significant monies there. We'll see. And we got to go to the state to file to pass a bill so that we don't pay the leasing fee or CMP. Louise Vitelli did that. And that's what that, that's what all of this controversy is based on is her law that got passed that said municipalities. And the companies are arguing it's a taking, right? Yeah, the so companies are arguing it's a taking. And just by the way, there's a little caveat in there that says unserved, like 25 over 3, too. Oh, good. Uh, so it's a little messy. Well, it could be fixed. Yeah, might be fixed. So there's a little bit, it's it's a lot. There's a lot there to, to uh, unpackage, but we'll see. Somebody's going to challenge it at the PUC before, I keep saying that, I say this to every project, before you get to X, somebody's going to challenge it. I've been saying that for over a year. It's you. Yeah, <laughs> nobody has. So it's going to be me and it's going to be somebody, some some other town, some of the, I think. Chris Johnson. Yeah, Chris Johnson. Yeah. I have one other tiny question just to, because my mind around this is still, I'm still, I'm, I think I'm like maybe six months to a year old right now, understanding of this. Um, if a company lays in um, fiber optic as their main line, uh, and then they connect to the coaxial cable that runs into the domain, that downgrades the signal until it hits the amplifier, does it not? Yes. Okay. And then if they do upgrades to the fiber optic that is still connected to the coaxial cable, those upgrades don't necessarily translate. Correct. Across. Yeah. Okay. So unless the fiber optic is all the way to the house, correct, it's it's not going to be able to grow or to do provide more advantage to the homeowner. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because of the limitations of the copper. Yeah, great. That's something that Westport Island and Whitefield do not comprehend. Yeah, well, I, I, just, places out there. I was just talking to somebody yesterday and they were saying, do you know what that's something? One of the arguments in there is exactly of the spectrum arguments that Spectrum makes is, oh, we're in testing right now for blah, 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 blah. That's what we've been saying for 20 years. Mm -hmm. They're always in testing for something. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's just never going to surpass a fiber connection. You know, first off, it's right now as the system sits, right, is 
you're getting fluctuations at your house. I know you are because I am. And so you get internet unstable or it's just not operating properly at some point. So you're just feeling like what's going on here. It's because it's a shared system and people are drawing at different amounts at different times. And, and it's not, you're not getting throughput back to your, into your home in the same way that you were two minutes ago or seven minutes ago or two hours ago or whatever it might be. So it's a really difficult they say, you know, oh, well, we'll increase your speed to three. You know, I have 450 megs at my house. You know, I, it doesn't feel any different than when I had 100. And if I went to a gig, it wouldn't feel any different again, I don't think. I mean, I've never felt any difference from that. You still get an unstable system. It's just not quite where you need to be. Now, is it, but, it's really hard when you're on the cutting edge of a vision that is not yet come to fruition in most places in the United States. You're ahead of the curve. So that's your big challenge ultimately from a technology standpoint. Nobody knows what they don't know. So when I'm on Cranberry Isles where all the uh, rich people from away are, Right. I don't know if there are rich people from away in the room. If there are, thank you for coming and thank you for spending your money. Uh, but um, they understood the value of fiber like this. Mm -hmm. They were like, give it to me, give it all to me. I don't care what it costs. I want it. And now that comes with an unlimited budget, right? Of course. So mm -hmm. let's be fair, right? But it also comes with a recognition of what somebody in Atlanta or New York City or some other Cincinnati, some other places are able to obtain and understanding what that value looks like and is, it's hard for us to understand it until you have it. So it makes it a very challenging situation. We can say all, the, all we want about how everything's gonna change and, and 8K holographic television is coming. You're not even gonna have a television eventually. You're gonna be seeing a show in your living room basically live like it's a play you're gonna have that and so that is coming and you know people have no what nobody could have conceived of uber 10 years ago right but if you have the platform you have the fiber who knows what the possibilities are so it's hard to sell that story i think but you know I don't know. It would be an interesting uh, article on the bottom of page 10 when it's all abandoned. No, we didn't know what we didn't know. That's right. 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 Exactly. Like, oh, we didn't know what we were talking about before the steam engine. Right. So, right. That's yeah. right. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Modern communications are, my son will never have a cable, you know, subscription. My, my son wants to do four devices at once. I think there's a note in there that uh, Deloitte did a study in 2019, the average home had 11 connected devices in 2022 or 2021, it's double. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one of them. No, <laughs> yes. no. People are connecting their dogs <laughs> to the internet, yeah. right? Seriously. I mean, that's where we're, you know, the, the fridge that is connected to the internet, your toaster. I mean, this is what, this is the world. We are. I just got a new shaver. You got a shaver. You have an app, so you shave it. <laughs> really? Yeah. So it can shave something when you're away? <laughs> but um, so I would just end by saying, Peach, I will send the stuff electronically to you, the two documents that I I just sent you the emails. Like, yeah. You probably already did, and I just embarrassed myself for not remembering. Nope. Looking right after you said, I sent it. Uh, thank you. So, um, so um, you'll have those things, and I'm going to do. Uh, um, I'm going to probably take the two documents and try to combine them over the next couple of days for you. So you look for this next week, so that you see really the the, the heart of the uh, report beginning to come to shape. So you start to see that. So you'll have that, and uh, if you have questions or you have concerns about the document or you feel like it's not reading correctly or any issue at all, feel free to call me individually or email me. I have no problem. I am 
very thick skin nowadays. So I have no ownership of what I write or anything like that. I'm not a particularly good writer. There are people who are a lot better at it than me. So I do my thing. And if people have things to say about it, feel free. We're having a local committee meeting Monday. Would it be possible to get the initial document emailed out before then? It's always a deadline, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So I'll, I will, yeah. Okay. And then, then later when we merge it. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. When is our next meeting? Is well, for the sixth. Uh, what's two weeks from now? It will be November third, two weeks from today. Uh, so that I, will be before the sixteenth. Yes. So we didn't get um, the only thing we really didn't get to was the grants, but we're doing our own grants for Wisconsin. I I circulated ours. Um, I sent it to everybody, but if you see stuff in the draft. Just get back to me. I'd like to get it in on Tuesday. They already got there. So. <laughs> and we had kudos for getting it in earlier. Well, Tommy, do you have uh, anything to report on Woolwich and for that grant application? You're muted. The, um, I had an agenda item for the select board on Monday, and they approved and signed a letter of support or whatever that the, that the application requires. Um, still working on the application. Um, I have a question, though. I noticed uh, in the Wiscasset application, the applic the type of application is other collaboration or whatever. Is that is that what we should all do? We should, uh, what, you guys remember what you did? Well, you I just, I was going to. I thought we did the regional. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was suggest. So down there, yeah, that's right what above I said. other is regional collaboration. Regional collaboration, okay. Because they're going to group us together anyway. Knowing okay. that we have the same application with the same people in each three of them, so they're going to do that. Um, we're not. We're not submitting. We still have to submit three applications, though, right? Right. Yeah, they're just on their on their side of the thing. They're just going to group services together. Right. We'll we'll be one entity for their cohort of twenty that they're hoping to put together. Um, from the other that's what, that's what Okay. Chris, uh, Got it. Um, so unless if you all have any feedback or whatever, I'm still tweaking, especially after Mark's um, comments today. I won't go into, I mean, we only have 150 words for each section, so <laughs> but um, we got our work cut out for us. This, this, this is not really the work we've got cut out for us, the work we've got cut, cut out for us is in our communities, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's exactly now, our right. suggestion of going to the committees, different committees. To get those people interested or not, and get them to come vote, I think we have a chance. To which committees? I'm sorry. Just other well, town committees. Town committees. Oh, I see. Yeah. So we, we don't have a big time. So if we have the dollars, we can start meeting in December. Yeah, I think so. And also town departments, as Larry was suggesting. Yeah. Let's start yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So, any other comments or thoughts for? Our next meeting. Well, thank you, Mark, for making time at the last minute to just show for us. I wasn't last minute. I had you. Uh, I had the meetings. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad it sounded felt like a last minute. I have to cry. It. There's no doubt. You had yeah, right, one thing for me. It was on my. It was on my agenda. I was planning on coming. So uh, I was thinking you guys were quiet. I hadn't heard from anybody. I was like, well, is the meeting still coming? I don't know. I, I don't know you just uh, if you if I'm part of the overall list of the meeting uh, thing yeah, or whatever what? I'll, I'll try to get it on yeah. and, and try to get here well if we um, are meeting November 3rd and the 17th for first and third Wednesdays and then we have the supplemental meeting with Consolidated on the 16th, then oh, it's the 16th. It wouldn't be bad for you to come the next day, perhaps. Yeah. I don't know if that's. Say again. The 17th of November. <clears throat> that's that's one month. That's uh, skipping a meeting for us, and that works perfect because I don't. I think it would be best to have more updates. Where is that meeting on the 16th? We're gonna have it over here at the Regional Planning Commission next to Sea Basket. 
Is that weird? So it's this, that one's the um, 16th. I have you on the 17th okay. of November. Perfect. But it's challenging. Okay. Well, we might want to pick, yeah. I have something after that that I signed up for without really thinking about it. Fame, the fame dinner is that night at uh, the Finance Authority of Maine. That I always get invited and they always want me to showcase something. So let me see what I can do. I'll figure it out. Well, thanks. I think we're we don't really have a set time here, but I think we're at the time is up. Thank you, Mark. Move to adjourn. Yeah, we'll always in order. It doesn't. We'll approve. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what a few minutes. Thank you very much. Oh, I wasn't ever watching you.